Do you own your one-on-one meetings with your boss or do they own you? Today on the Champion Forum Podcast, I'm going to give you some proven strategies that will help you have more effective and meaningful conversations with your boss. Time with your boss is important, especially in this day and age where everyone has more to do than they have time. You know, this is precious opportunities that we have to showcase what we're doing, to ask the right questions, and to gain a level of respect with the leaders that are above us. These meetings are your meetings, and they're the biggest opportunity to showcase to your leader what's going on when they're not around. This is a great opportunity for you to increase your visibility within your organization and with your boss. And I understand there's people watching and they're like, look, there's only three of us in the office. I get that. But whether there's three of you in the office or there's 30,000 of you, what I will tell you is having meaningful conversations with the people above you, they go a long way and they will help you become the obvious choice. And when I have conversations with people like this, from time to time, I hear about, well, Jeff, you don't know the personality of my boss. Like, you know, going into own a one-on-one is not happening. They steamroll every conversation. They this, they that. Here's what I would challenge you with is that is a factor. But I want you to take some of the things I'm going to talk about today. And even if you can't do all of them, I just want you to ask yourself, what can I do differently to have more meaningful engagement with my leader. You know, when I was a senior leader in the corporate world, I had one-on meetings with my entire team. I dedicated time to this. I invested time. The ROI was amazing. And it was so obvious to me who showed up to lead that meeting versus the ones who just kind of, they kind of just sat back and let me run it. You know, they just kind of showed up to the meeting But then I had these people that came to the meeting, ready to lead the meeting. They they came prepared for the meeting. Well, guess who more times than not got promoted into new roles? The one that was leading the meeting. The one who owned the meeting. The one who came with ideas and solutions. The one who came to the meeting with ideas that challenged the status quo or maybe even challenged my way of thinking. Now, uh, fast forward you know, four and a half years post-corporate world, now I'm a consultant, I get to hear this same frustration from business owners and senior leaders about their direct reports and how they are or are not showing up to these one-on-one connections. Many managers tell me flat out that their biggest frustration is when employees are not prepared for these one-on-one meetings because I'm an advocate of the one-on-one meeting. This is something I push in with my clients. Over the past four years, I've had countless managers, CEOs, entrepreneurs. They'll say some version of this to me all the time. Hey, during a one-on-one, I'll ask a question. There's silence on the other end. It's like, hello, McFly, are you there? I'm asking a question, and I'm looking at deer in the headlights. Or or, uh, how about this one? They'll come in, and they'll use the one-on-one debrief as a complaining session. And it's clear that they have not been thoughtful about the feedback that they're offering. They're not thinking through what they're going to say. There's a lack of preparation. And these leaders are so frustrated about it at the senior level. And so here today on the Champion Forum podcast, if you are, whether you're a a mid-level leader uh, or you aspire to be a leader, and you're having any type of one-on-one connection with your boss, I'm here to tell you that this advice will absolutely help you stand out in the crowd. As an employee, this may be somewhat surprising to hear. Like, wow, this is that big of a deal? We can often underestimate how frustrating it is for a leader or a manager when we don't come fully prepared to a one-on-one meeting. And if you have a great relationship with your boss, do not overcompensate that great relationship for being unprepared for a meeting. If you're someone listening today, that wants to stand out, you want to make bigger impact on your leader, here's exactly what you need to do to lead your one-on-one meetings with your boss. 
The first thing, and probably the most important, is set the agenda for the meeting. What you don't want to do is sit back and let your manager talk the whole time. Now, you may have a manager that's a talker, that's very aggressive. I get it. But from time to time, you might want to go in there tactfully and start setting some things in the agenda. Start small doing this if it's not normal for you so that uh, there's no insecurity from the, the leader that you are sitting under. You know, if you go in there with this full-page document and this never happened before, they're going to be a little bit taken back. So prepare yourself and be tactful about your leader and that relationship. But you might want to come into a meeting strong and say, hey, I have a couple agenda items for us to talk about today, uh, including ABC and XYZ. Now, if this is not normal, be tactful. I can't stress this enough because I'm going to get a message from somebody. Jeff, I tried it. My boss flipped out. How dare you come in here and tell me what to do? Like, you got to have a level of tact. If this isn't normal, you have an alpha dominant boss. You're going to want to finesse into this a little bit versus making them feel like you're taking all the power away from them. You may want to just come in the first time and just say, uh, hey, boss, uh, looking forward to the meeting today. I know that you typically have action items for me. If time would allow at the front or end of our conversation, I was hoping to present to you some new and fresh ideas on the project or an update on this or a question that I had about my development. Uh, if we could work that into this conversation, I certainly would be grateful. That might be the tactful way that you go about doing that. But nonetheless, push towards owning the meeting and setting the agenda. The second thing that I would tell you to do is set time aside prior to this one-on-one -on -one connection to plan and prepare. We should never go into a meeting uh, of this caliber winging it or hoping for the best. Being intentional with this will make you more grounded and less emotional. You know, I can tell you as a leader, many one-on-ones throughout, you know, my two decades of leadership uh, have gotten emotional. I would almost argue at times overly emotional. You know, things that I would say or whatever it might be and they just weren't ready or they didn't expect to hear it and here comes some emotion. When you're grounded and you're prepared, it, it's going to breed confidence. Confidence breeds composure. Emotional. Now, look, I'm for some healthy emotion. But when emotion turns into irrational, you're losing composure. You're losing credibility. What you want to do is, like, review some of your meeting notes from the past with these one-on-ones. Look over these notes. Track some ongoing discussions. Uh, what, what were some commitments that were made in prior conversations? Do you have updates on those things? Can you talk about them? Can you let them know where the progress was? Maybe it's areas of opportunity and development for you that your boss called out, and you could tell them what you're doing to get better in those areas. Maybe you need to prepare some data. Maybe there's some reporting that you can prepare for your leader. Whatever you can do to collect any relevant performance metrics, project updates, any data that supports the discussion points, that's going to say to your leader, they are ready to go, they are prepared you got to know your numbers, right? Whatever that looks like for you. We have to intimately know those things. We can't wing it. Most often, our leaders got to where they are because they were doing this as well. This is going to help you stand out. The alternative is you just fly into the meeting all flustered. You're all over the place. You're kind of hit and miss. You're nervous to speak to your boss about important items because you're not prepared to talk about them. Your boss is going to pick up on this. And it's going to destroy your credibility. The third thing I would tell you to do is highlight your wins and achievements. And I know this isn't always easy. I get it. I'm not asking you to be arrogant. I'm not asking you to go in there and put on a show for somebody. What I am saying is that far too often direct reports don't do this enough. This was one of my biggest early flaws as uh, I was being looked over for opportunities. I remember interviewing on the biggest stage, uh, you know, where I had to go from Pittsburgh to corporate, and I'm in an interview, and at the end of the interview, the, uh, the person interviewing me said, how come I've never met you before? How come I've never heard you before? And he told me this art of take credit for the great things that you're doing. And I thought, my gosh, nobody's ever really presented it that way. Now, this, cre this, cre this is, you know, some tact, right? We don't want to be too showy. We don't want to pound our chest. 
find a way to do this with humility and make it informative versus this look at me moment, right? And people can read through that, but you got to highlight your achievements. You got to highlight progress. Use tact doing it, but please, for, for the sake of everything professional, do not downplay the amazing things that you're doing. This is crucial. Stay humble, but be confident and inform your boss of the good things that are happening. The next step would be to prepare your questions. And this is a big one. I, I remember so many times I would close down a one-on-one -on -one and I would say, so, hey, any questions for me? Uh, no, I'm good, but if I think of anything, I'll let you know. You don't have one question? Like nothing? I would always, you know, sit there in silence after they walked out thinking, do they just not care? Uh, what, how, what, did I, what am I missing here, right? You want to go in with questions. Clarify your needs. Think about what's the information you need? What guidance do you need? What feedback do you need from your boss? And prepare questions specific to what those needs might be. The other thing to do, if you don't know what else to ask, ask for feedback. Ask for feedback on specific areas maybe that you've identified as weaknesses or opportunities so that you can improve and you can gain more insight from somebody maybe that has been where you're trying to go. When you become somebody that, that presents your brand as you're open to critique and you're open to tough feedback, I will tell you, you are opening yourself up for great progress and great advancement. So often, leaders will not give this critique to certain people because they're afraid of this defensive posture, this high emotion, this backlash of attitude. So it's like, look, it's not even worth poking the bear. Don't even bother. No, ask questions. Solicit this. So prepare questions going into your one-on-one. -on -one. The other thing is to reflect on your own performance. This is where you got to look in the mirror. Take time to evaluate your recent work. What's happening in your, in your current state? What are your strengths? What are your areas of improvement? And do some real self-reflection here. Because what you want to be able to do is anticipate feedback. Be ready to discuss these challenges and these mistakes that maybe you're having. Uh, along with how do you plan to address them? You know, you hear me say on this show a lot, the best way to handle an objection is a great presentation. When you're reflecting on your performance, instead of waiting on your boss to say, hey, this is an area you need to get better at, imagine when you're doing this deep reflection and you're owning your stuff, you're owning your mistakes, you're owning your inferiorities, you're owning all your weaknesses, and you're bringing them to the table, but you're also bringing a plan to get better. Wow, now, now we're in partnership. Take a position of extreme ownership over your progress because nobody likes excuses. No, nobody wants the excuses as to why you're always late to meetings. Nobody wants the excuses as to why you always interrupt in a meeting. Nobody wants the excuses as to why when you're in a conversation with somebody, you talk twice as much as you listen. Nobody wants the excuses. But what they do want is they want you to own it and they want to help you create a plan to improve. We all have them. I have plenty of them. We don't have enough time in this episode for me to tell you all the things I need to work on. But the, it all starts with self-awareness. When you pull your boss into this journey, we're creating partnership. The next thing is to prepare uh, solutions or suggestions. Be proactive. Instead of just going in and presenting problems, be prepared with potential solutions or ideas moving forward. Now, uh, asterisk here. I don't come from the leadership camp of don't present a problem to me unless you have a solution. The problem with that leadership style is this. You're telling everybody, unless you have a solution, don't bring a problem. Let me ask you this as a, as a leader listening. Don't you want to know the problems? I do. If there's a problem in my organization, I want to know about it. When I say don't bring me problems without solutions, what I'm saying is don't bring me problems if you don't have a solution. I want to be involved with the problems that nobody has a solution to versus just letting them go. But what you don't want to do is be the crybaby 
that all you do is come into the one-on-one with your boss. Now, look, if you're on this show, you're not a crybaby. So hear my passion in being crybabies, right? We don't want to be, we don't want this brand. And I don't care how professional we present it and how much tact. Hey, one more thing. I just have a concern uh, or this famous one. Uh, Can I challenge you a little bit? When anybody that I've ever led starts a conversation with, can I challenge you a little bit? I brace myself for a crybaby whiner. Nobody likes this, right? We have to own it and we have to think through solutions. We are strategic thinkers. Consider how your suggestions align with the broader team or the company goals. When you're doing this, what you're doing is you're finding alignment. You can't just say, hey, uh, morale's low, so we need uh, pony rides on Fridays. What I'm going to think about is, is this aligning with the goals? Is this aligning with the vision of my boss? When I do this, now I become an advocate, not a brown noser, not a brown noser. I become an advocate and I become a resource. When you become a resource, your opportunity for growth and advancement skyrocket. Prepare your questions. Don't don't miss this one. Ask for the feedback. I stress this point quite a bit, but clarify the needs and then plan for follow-up. What's the next steps? What what should the next steps be? I think this is a great way to close out a one-on-one is identify action items. What's the follow-up tasks going to look like? When are they going to be completed? Maybe you even put them in the SMART format, S-M-A-R-T, right? And now what we have is this is what I'm going to do. And boss, this is what you said that you would do. Together, we'll work on this for better outcomes. Now we have a plan for follow-up. Now, guess what? In the next one-on-one, now we have updates. This is how you find momentum. This is how you find incremental progress. How many times have you gotten out of a meeting and you took five pages of notes and nothing happened? Nothing happened. We see this in conferences all the time. People take pages of notes at my workshops, and I might go into their company four months later, and I'm like, hey, so uh, rattle off the five accountability questions. Oh, gosh, what were those again? I can't even remember. Well, I saw you over there taking 100 pages of notes. Did you do anything with it? We get busy. It's not because it's intentional. We get busy. So when you are clearly identifying a plan for follow-up and action steps, you're taking ownership of this one-on-one, and you're telling this leader, I'm about to go execute. I'm about to make something happen. This may seem like a lot to do, all these things that I talked about today. But keep in mind that there's more that you can put into a one-on-one than maybe what you're doing right now. The more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. And while a 30-minute or 60-minute meeting doesn't seem like much, maybe in the span of a week or a month, it's an opportunity to create a better relationship with your manager and to improve the work environment around you. Not to mention, it's going to help you become more engaged with your job. Why? Because these one-on-one connections are meaningful. Not to mention, nobody's doing this. There's such a small minority of people that take these one-on-one connections seriously. Most people see them more as a check in the box and a walk the green mile and get this over with kind of thing. But by owning these meetings, you're going to be well on your way to pay increases, promotions, and you will certainly stand out as the obvious choice because not many people are going to crack this door open. Until next week. Prepare to win and keep turning the pressure into potential.